Good evening. Welcome to City Council meeting of March 16th, 2016. Could I have the roll call, please? Dan Carey. Present. Peg Conniff. Here. Salem Derby. Present. Jennifer Hayes. Here. J.P. Kosinski. Here. Joe McCoy. Here. Dan Rist. Here. Tamara Smith. Here. Joy Winnie. Can we all please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance? Pledge of Allegiance, Allegiance to, to the flag, flag of the United, United States, States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Can I have the approval for the minutes? I move we second? approve the minutes second. of March 2nd. A motion a second to approve the minutes of March 2nd. <coughs> all those in favor? Aye. 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 Any abstentions? Aye. No abstention. Anyone no? Okay, motion still passes. Public speak time. Is there anyone here from the public who would like to address the council other than what's on the public hearings? Please come to the podium. Not seeing any. Um, communications from elected officials, boards, and committees. Councillor Derby. Thank you, Mr. President. We do have um, uh, some correspondence from the American Legion, uh, and this is uh, an event called Walking for Those Who Marched for Us. It's going to be held May 14th. Uh, with a rain date of May 15th at the American Legion Post 224 in East Hampton. Uh, there's going to be a registration period from 9 to 10, a short opening ceremony, uh, and then at 10 a.m. there's going to be a walk through East Hampton um, starting immediately after, and there's going to be a lunch. And this is to support uh, veterans who have been affected by natural disasters, uh, and I believe they are looking for donations um, of $20 per person, uh, people over the age of 10. Okay. So it sounds like a good event. Great. Thank you. Mayor of Communications, Mayor Cadger. I just wanted to take a minute to read something that we received from the um, town manager in uh, Amherst. Um, I am writing to thank you and your public safety officials for your assistance in providing mutual aid to the Amherst Police Department on March 5, 2016 for what has formerly been known as the Blarney Blowout. As you know, the presence of your officers was instrumental in helping to keep the situation under control and ensuring the safety of students, public safety officials, and citizens. Mm -hmm. Once again, please accept our sincere thanks. We appreciate our mutual aid partners' assistance, cooperation to ensure the success of these efforts. So um, uh, there were pro approximately 18 officers. Uh, the police chief was, was uh, included in that. And this was at no charge at all to our city. And um, it went extremely well. I'm sure you've read about it and prevented what you probably remember in past years of burning cars, burning trees. So what their area was was the apartment complexes. And um, I also would like to commend the uh, planning board uh, for the um, approval processes that they did at last night's public hearings. Uh, they approved uh, two special permits. One is for Yankee Hill Machine, which we're very excited about. That's going to relocate at 412 Main Street, the former uh, Argotech or J.P. Stevens, Stevens Urethane Building, which has been vacant. So they're hoping if everything goes okay, well, they have the 20-day waiting period, and they're hoping if everything goes okay, they've got some renovations to do, um, fixing the HVAC system and maybe moving in by the end of this year. And it should actually open up a few jobs, and these jobs are skilled machinist jobs. So we're very excited about manufacturing coming back in. Uh, the other permit that they approved, special permit, was for 122 Pleasant Street, which is Hampton Care Facility, Inc., and um, that's the for to cultivate and dispense medical marijuana. Um, also wanted to uh, um, make a comment that I believe uh, the 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 city has been, was very proactive with our um, our ordinance subcommittee, putting in an ordinance ahead of time so that. Um, um, when something like this came our way, it's all planned out, and it definitely made the process so much smoother. Um, the planning board was pretty much uh, very, very impressed with the permitting uh, that uh, they were presented with last night, and uh, at, you know during their review went through everything. Um, our concerns were uh, when they first approached us. Uh, I had a meeting, ca uh, called in our city planner, our board of health agent, our police chief. Uh, oh, uh, city council president and our city attorney uh, just to see what concerns we might have. And of course our concerns are always going to be health, safety, and security. Uh, and uh, our police chief had some, you know, definite, a lot of questions on that. Um, they notified, they, they did their abundance notification. 
um, uh, actually invited people to a, a meet and greet, the abutters, which they went and were very impressed. Uh, and also, uh, we did a site visit uh, with the uh, with the police chief. The fire chief was there, and um, also our uh, our police captain to uh, go over all the different security issues. And they're they're very thrilled to be working with our police and our fire. They found it extremely helpful. So uh, on all the security the security issues. So we feel like everything has been handled. Um, and addressed and we're very excited about these two moves and I understand that um, when they actually have already received a call from the state today so they didn't waste any time uh, getting this is phase three which they believe is the easiest of the three phases um, and uh, that was started with the local approval and uh, the state just wanted to verify the information that they received and uh, they will be dispensing looking to dispense in two other areas um, and <coughs> that hasn't been definite yet, but I know Springfield is one of the areas that they're looking for. Uh, but ours will be cultivation and dispensary. So, any questions? Any Don't questions for the mayor? Yes, sir. What is the um, time frame for the medical marijuana dispensary? They were talking about probably, f uh, well, first of all, they have to receive their final state approval. And um, they had a lot of things. and. After after they receive that, then they'll start with their building permits and their COs. But um, I think they were figuring it would be at least another 90 days of approval. So um, if everything goes okay, it, I think they were hoping for you know maybe the end of the year fall type of thing. Okay. But they have to get they don't have their state approval yet. Okay. Thank you. Any questions, Councilor Hayes? You signed on to a letter with uh, Mayor Sede Warren. Could you explain a little bit about that? I think it's a great idea. Okay. Um, yeah, uh, would you mind repeating it? A, a letter with Mayor Sede Warren? Yeah, he's the the mayor of Newton. Yes, I, I know who he is, but would you you want you? You signed about on to a letter to go to the state house regarding the net metering for solar, and I think it's it's great that you did that. Not a lot of communities did that, so. Right, and and you, I'm sure you're well aware of the net metering that we're doing here in East Hampton. Um, you all are aware of our solar, the lease that we have with our over our landfill. Well, um, we're also in the process of entering a net metering agreement where uh, we would have offsite uh, Deerfield uh, that will not need their credits and will be, you know, we will be purchasing their credits for us. So that's something that's upcoming for us. Um, it's an extreme. First of all, it, it's a great green measure, but it's an extreme savings for the city on um, the landfill because those uh, credits come directly through to all of our utility bills. And what I'm looking at for the next net metering credit is to apply it to our high school. And you already know that that has solar too, but um, still like the bills are still high. But uh, that would be where we would apply that. We figured we could take probably about 1.5 million kilowatts of available credits, and uh, that's what we're doing. That's a lot of kilowatts. Great. Additional that's questions, great. comments? Great. Good. Good. Okay, thank you, Mayor. You I'll go, I'm going to uh, go one step further than um, the Mayor Kadger did and, and put a special kudos for Councilor Derby because I remember years ago when the medical marijuana just hit hit the, I, the consciousness, he was, um, his, his idea to be ahead of the ball, said, you know, we should have regulations in place so that if this ever approaches East Hampton, and it, it came to fruition last night because this group was saying that phase two is they have to meet local zoning laws. And a lot of the communities had no zoning laws in place. And so the fact that we had our zoning laws in place, I think made that transition easier. So I hope it ends up being a win-win situation for the community. So again, thank you for your efforts on that, Councilor Derby. Um, actually, I did skip over something quickly, which I said I want to make sure to do. If anyone from either councilors or precinct councilors have any announcements they would like to make, please, this is, I didn't mean to skip over that, but if there's anyone has anything to make. Okay. Uh, just that if there are any more like open houses or inviting the public that are happening within my district I would like to be invited I mean I know you were invited as the City Council president but inviting other city councilors would have been great I would have loved to have gone yeah I th that particular meeting I think was just an advisory meeting it was not a public meeting it was a private meeting with just a few you know, the public health agent, the fire chief, the police chief, myself, you know, head the council. But when those kind of things are happening within district, it would be great if the city councilor who's who's with that district got invited. Okay. 
Okay. Um, thank you for that comment. Uh, moving on, Standing Committee's Finance Council Wrist. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, we have two public hearings this evening, which we'll talk about at the, that time. We will be meeting next Wednesday, the 23rd. We did not have a meeting last week because we had no items on our agenda. Um, I am going to ask the clerk if she could put together some information on stipends for that meeting, and if that's too soon, at least in the next finance meeting. Um, I would like to make, a, uh, as a first reading, new business, make a motion to send it to finance. First, I'll make a first reading. We're, we have received a supplemental appropriation request. Request is hereby made for the approval of the following appropriation. The amount requested is $183,000 to be appropriated from free cash. Uh, to be appropriated fire department overtime, $183,000. Make a motion that this be sent to finance for review. Second. Okay, a motion is second to move the supplemental appropriation of $183,000 to finance for additional review. Additional questions or comments? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstain? Motion passes. That concludes my report, Mr. President. Okay, thank you. I think we might be able to get public safety and Councillor Hayes. Um, thank you, Mr. President. We're continuing with our review of the draft street protocol and also the request to allow on street parking. We have scheduled a meeting for Thursday, the 24th at 5 p.m., room to be determined. And would you like me to move Fox Run as new business? Yeah, that would be great. Yes. Into public safety? I'd like to make a motion that um, Public Safety Committee take a look at Fox Run as a public way. Second. Okay, a motion and a second to move the public Fox Run as a public way to public safety. Any additional questions or comments? All those in favor? Aye. aye Opposed? Aye. Abstain? Motion passes. Thus concludes. Thank you. Um, I think appointments make a little bit longer, so I'll entertain a slow motion to open the public hearings. <laughs> uh, move we open the public hearings. Second. Second, okay, second a motion, a second to open the public hearings. Um, let me just check my time. Yes, say all those in favor. Anyway. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? Motion passes. I, my it? phone had actually 612. I thought from this angle it was closer to 614. But why don't we just uh, wait for a couple minutes just to be on time. Okay. Proceed. Thank you, Mr. Council President. Council Rest, I'm sorry. Um, first item on the agenda is $650 planning board request. Finance committee approved this three to zero. This has to do with the fact that the planning board clerk had to deal with a lot of special planning board meetings. Uh, you might recall the Fort Hill brewery issue took a lot of time, and the planning board personnel services was running out of funds to pay for the clerk. I'll allow the mayor to come and explain this since the planner did not have child services this evening, so she couldn't come. Yes, this is a clerical position um, that these are these positions are very hard to fill. It's uh, somebody that just comes in just to do the minutes for the meetings. And actually, this person was at the planning board meeting last night, and she's been with us almost a year, and she's doing an excellent job. Um, and it's hard to plan, you know, what you would need in your budget for the year. But typically, uh, we don't end up having to come back for transfers on this one. But uh, I, I, you'll recall Fort Hill. Uh, those There was probably an extra three uh, public hearings on that and planning board meetings, and they were very long. So uh, that's really uh, where the extra uh, funds went to cover for her time for those meetings. Okay, great. Is anyone else from the city who would like to address this topic? Or is there anyone from the public who would like to come to the podium? 
Nothing said. Councilor Bristol, yeah. Okay, therefore I'll make a motion. Uh, I ask the City Council approve the following interdepartmental transfer. The amount requested is $650. It is to be transferred from the Reserve Fund to be transferred to the Planning Board Personal Service Account, $650 for the purpose of providing funds for clerical services for an unforeseen increase in planning board meetings. Second. Okay, a motion a second to approve the uh, departmental transfer of $650,000, I mean $650 from the reserve fund to the planning board personnel <laughs> services. Any additional questions or comments? Did you raise your hand? Yeah. Okay, I, uh, I, I think this is a, a reasonable request uh, and use of funds. Um, I know that you know, since I've, the ordinance subcommittee works pretty closely with the planning board and I attended a lot of those meetings, I feel like it's important for the planning board to be able to focus on the issues at hand and not have to worry about taking minutes during their deliberations. So I feel like this is a, a smart use of, the, of this money. Mm -hmm. okay. Any other comments, questions? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed, abstain? Motion passes. The second item is another departmental transfer. The amount is $8,157.24, which the Finance Committee approved 3 to 0. It has to deal with the Fire Department's vacation payout, and I'd like the uh, Chief to come up and explain it to the Council, as he'll do a much better job than I. Uh, Thank you. Good evening. Uh, the request before you tonight, uh, we had a firefighter who was out of work for over a year on injury. Uh, recently retired due to those injuries so we owe him for his year of vacation he was not able to use because vacation is granted on February <coughs> 1st of every year uh, it became an old bill that was unpayable out of budget that's why the request for the 8,000 was there so this is an old bill yes do you have the ability to explain what an old bill means to the counselors who may not remember? It, the uh, debt was incurred before the start of this fiscal year, so I would not be able to pay it out of this year's budget. I see. So you have to have extra money. Okay. Any additional any questions or comments for the chief? No. Okay. Thank you, thank you for your time. If there's anyone from the public who would like to address the council on this appropriation, please come to the podium. No. Okay. Back to Councillor Riss then. I hereby request the council approve an interdepartmental transfer. The amount requested is $8,157.24 to be transferred from the reserve fund to be transferred to the fire department prior year vacation payout for the total amount of $8,157.24. Uh, amount requested is for the purpose of providing funds for a prior year vacation payout. Second. Okay, a motion and a second to approve. Uh, approve the departmental transfer of $8,157.24. Any additional questions or comments? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed, abstain. Motion passes. Mr. President, I'll move that the, fund, the public hearings be closed. Second. Okay, motion a second to close public hearings. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed, abstain. Motion passes. Uh, back to standing committee's appointments, Councillor Smith. Okay, thank you. The appointments meet, committee met at 5 o'clock tonight to discuss three mayoral appointments, so I'll discuss them one by one. The first consideration that we wanted to move forward to the full city council is for Tricia Rob Rogers, who is applying to be considered for the Board of Health with a term expiration of 12-31-17. Tricia Rogers is a physician's assistant in the East Hampton Valley Medical Group and had expressed interest <coughs> in having a role in the Board of Health in East Hampton. She's a lifelong resident of East Hampton as well. And so those are the strengths that she brings to this position. She has a um, specialty in diabetes care, so her, her particular health leaning is towards the management of chronic illnesses, which with an aging population in East Hampton is really a vital concern. So the subcommittee voted uh, two to zero to move Tricia Rogers forward for consideration at the full council. So given that, I would like to make a motion for the full council to consider the appointment of <coughs> Tricia Rogers for the Board of Health with a term expiration of 1231-17. Second. Okay, we have a motion 
Second to appoint Tricia Rogers, the Board of Health. Additional questions, comments? Councilor Rist? Uh, Councilor, was she interviewed this evening? She was not interviewed this evening. She was not able to come here for the interview. And uh, we were able to discuss both with her and with the mayor who had previously interviewed her. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, I feel very comfortable that we have a health um, professional on the board. I know we've been lacking a board member here <coughs> and um, I feel very happy now that we have been able to get a new member. My daughter is a physician assistant and they have ex a great breadth of knowledge in healthcare. And I hope she finds it rewarding and I hope she stays out a while because this is a valuable addition to our board of health. Okay. Additional comments, questions? No? Okay. Um, to add to that, she also, as a candidate, has experience with epidemiology, which is just the research and statistics behind health care. And, um, oh, I had one more, one more aspect of her. Oh, it's just the insider one. No, it wasn't that. There was something else that, uh, about her, but I think that's enough to go on just with that in terms of. So there is a motion and a second. So all those in favor? <coughs> Aye. Aye. Oppose? Abstain? Motion passes. Okay, our second uh, consideration is for Audrey Hyvenen for the PLAE Board of Directors with term expiration of 123117. And Audrey, as a candidate, has a long, long history of service to various volunteer positions within the city of East Hampton. This would be her first sitting on a, a civic board or committee. And so the, the initial interview, I was able to sit in on that interview. And Rayma, who is the board of directors chair, and the mayor and I were all able to interview her. And, um, she was highly qualified and a patron of the library, as well as knowing the structural structural background of why she would be a good board and committee back member. So, I don't know if anyone else has any discussion. I do. Mm -hmm. I do not know what the PLAE board does. Oh. Or what that stands for. Mayor, can I have you come up and... Does anybody else, or are we all just oh, public, library. Library. public library association in East Hampton? Great. <laughs> and um, I don't have that in front of me right now, but there are. It's a different level of involvement with the library versus the larger. Um, oh, I don't know the terminology. I, I should have brought that with me, but in terms of her role, it would be with the local board and supporting the local library versus legislation towards libraries. Mayor, actually, if you don't mind coming up, a question. Mm -hmm. uh, if you don't mind coming up, just a question. So I, I, now I'm getting confused. How does the PLE differ from the, the, the Wilson Library Board? Is it the same thing? No. Okay. Um, and, and you'll probably remember maybe about four or five years ago when there was a reorganization and this was to get more public uh, participation into this because the uh, the board was private so now uh, we have appointments and they have a seat okay. and they're able to be part of it okay but it's not they're not the whole makeup of it I so it is a little confusing right. but it's it's uh, the city's uh, public part participation into it okay they represent us okay thank you very much back to you Councilor Hayes so. Smith <clears throat> Smith. <laughs> <laughs> I look Smith. Okay, so I'll make a motion um, to accept Audrey Hyvenen to the PLAE Board of Directors with a term expiration of 12 31 17. Second. Okay, a motion a second to accept Audrey Hyvenen to the PLAE Board of Directors, term 12 31 17. Any additional questions or comments or discussions? Council Hayes? No, I mean, I think it's great because we have a new director for the Emily Williston Library, and I'm really trying to go out of my way to like really support what our library system is doing right now because we do have a non-traditional structure with how we put that library forward and we also don't have a tremendous amount of funding for our library right now which I would like to see changed at some point but for now that is what our director is doing and to really support 
the work that is happening right now. So it's good to see that we would have a full board with this. So great. Any additional questions or comments? No. Um, <clears throat> I'm sorry. Did you make a motion? Yeah. There's a second. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstain? Motion passes. And our third consideration for an appointment is for Fran Hutchins to the Affordable and Fair Housing Partnership with the term expiration of 12-31-18. And um, Fran Hutchins, as a candidate, has been interested in joining the Affordable and Fair Housing Partnership. She previously was working um, with Fair Housing in Los Angeles, the city of Los Angeles, so brings prior experience to the board. And the existing Affordable and Fair Housing Partnership board members were all very enthusiastic over Fran um, joining the partnership. So, I would like to make a motion for Fran Hutchins to be considered for the Affordable and Fair Housing Partnership with a term expiration of 12-31-18. Second. Okay, a motion and second to set Fran Hutchins, the Affordable and Fair Housing Partnership. Additional questions or comments? Okay. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed, abstain. Motion passes. Okay, we do not currently have any appointments to consider, so we have not set our next date. So this concludes my report. Okay, thank you. Ordinance, Councilor Derby. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, the Ordinance Subcommittee uh, did meet last week, uh, and at that time, we drafted a Ordinance Subcommittee statement uh, as requested by the Rules Committee. Um, and we have not finalized that statement yet. I did email it to Dan to um, get some feedback. Uh, and then after we finished drafting uh, our ordinance mission statement, we looked at some uh, model sign ordinances. As you know, the, uh, we did last week, or two weeks ago, sent the sign ordinance back to the planning board to comply with the Supreme Court decision. Um, and so we started looking at potential fixes and other things that might improve our sign ordinance. Um, and we have not set another date, but that is forthcoming for our next meeting. That concludes. Okay, did you want to move that C for the? Business? Sure. Uh, so we do have um, a request from Councillor Smith uh, regarding. Or that's. Oh, that. you do C though. Oh, you want me to do C first? Yeah. Okay. So I'll do C first then. A request from property owner to change the zoning of 130 Cottage Street from R10 to downtown business to the ordinance subcommittee and the planning board. Uh, do you want me to do T? Do no, uh, Tamara's going to do that one. There you go. Okay, so there's a motion to move that to ordinance. Is there a second? Second. Okay, a motion to second to move to ordinance and the planning board the request to change the zoning of 130 Cod Street from R10 to downtown business. Additional questions or comments? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? Motion passes. And I told Councillor Smith she could introduce D, so Councillor Smith. Oh, Councillor Smith. Okay, thank you. I would like to request that the council formally consider the matter of whether or not we want any formal ordinance restricting the use of single plastic single use plastic bags and styrofoam containers for food and beverages in the city of East Hampton. So I've prepared a statement to uh, really justify why I'm asking for this at this time. So I've lived in East Hampton since 2007 and throughout this time I've watched our city become more purposeful in its environmentally friendly living. This has happened at the municipal level, within our public schools, among several businesses in East Hampton, and at a private citizen level. East Hampton has shown commitment to sustainability at the citywide level. In 2010, East Hampton earned the distinction of being one of the first 35 municipalities in the Commonwealth to earn a green communities designation. We are already employing green efforts prior to this designation and continue to do so. This falls in line with the Master Plan of East Hampton, where residents indicated that a priority for the future must include sustainability for our environment. Our city's planning department utilizes a smart growth zoning plan, which highlights sustainability efforts. We enjoy the benefits of open preserved lands in our city and have extensive rail trails throughout East Hampton. The Barnes Aquifer provides us with fresh drinking water. Our wastewater treatment plant has taken measures to be environmentally friendly. 
We were the first city in the state to create a solar power field based on a previous landfill. Our city lights have been switched to LED lighting and our school buildings have been fitted with $300,000 worth of energy reduction innovations through grants. East Hampton has made conscious efforts to reduce our energy consumption. Our city has been lauded as a model green community through the combined efforts of Mayor Kadger, Mike Tosnick, our city's planning department, the energy advisory committee, and our public schools. Thus far, the city, these changes have been simple as citizens to absorb as they have occurred and we as a community did not have to do much to change individual behaviors to have this happen. One separate way that the city council plays a role in our community sustainability efforts is through the ordinance created for our city. Thus far, we have no general legislation in East Hampton that provides any guidelines for the disposal of plastics and polystyrene, commonly known as styrofoam. The scientific evidence is mounting. We are facing a national social problem crisis regarding the use of non-biodegradable plastics. The cost to the environment, to the economy, and to the health of our population have all been extensively researched and the results are consistent. Environmentalism is the inconvenient truth that we face as a world. Currently, 18 communities within Massachusetts already have laws in their cities and towns which restrict the use of these plastics and polystyrene. There are currently three bills in the Massachusetts State House and in the Senate. This is a social issue that's being addressed at local, state, and national levels. East Hampton needs to consider our role or our lack of role in this movement. I urge us as a city council to begin the formal process of considering if we want to pass legislation to restrict or ban the use of polystyrene food and beverage containers and plastic bags. We need to carefully consider what makes the most sense for East Hampton and the unique character of our city. This is a process that has many stakeholders and we can begin those conversations in an open and public forum through our vetting process at the ordinance subcommittee level. I am bringing this forth as a formal measure to consider for action for these reasons. Thank you. I'm running as a motion to move it to ordinance. So I will make this as a motion to move to ordinance to start that process. Second. second. Okay, a motion a second to move to ordinance the uh, whether to uh, look at an ordinance for restrictive single-use plastic bags and styrofoam containers. Additional <coughs> comments and discussion at this time? No. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? Motion passes. Um, yes, okay, that's me. Um, so old business, I was talking to Council Rich early. Oh, I am so sorry. Property, <laughs> Council President. Uh, with the Rules Committee asking for mission statements for the various committees, I'd like to have the Property Committee convene, if possible, next, uh, for just before our next meeting for the full City Council, April 6th at 5.30 p.m. Uh, to begin discussions and review uh, if that time works for Councilor Conniff. If it doesn't, we'll schedule another time, but we will meet uh, just to go over uh, over a draft. I'll talk to you afterward. Great. We'll come up with a date. So that's forthcoming. Okay. So, no, no. No sure. official. Okay. 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 Uh, Rules of Government Relations, Council Rist. Well, I thank both uh, the Property Committee and the Ordinance Committee. I did get that uh, Google Doc, and I'll look at it. Um, uh, no, I got yours too, but from uh, Councilor Derby. Um, I think uh, public safety also has to send me one. So we need public safety ordinance and property to conclude those. I have two formally adopted, well not adopted, but uh, brought to my attention and I'll send those out for review. Uh, they will become rules 11H, 11I, etc. all part of the subcommittee rules. Um, which begin on Rule 11. I wanted to also bring up, bring the counselor's attention, now that we're doing digital process for getting our agendas, there was some discussion from our clerk regarding agenda deadlines. And I'd like to read Rule 5D because it's exact to filing deadlines. And they were put in place primarily to make sure that the public and the counselors had sufficient time to review agenda items. Filing deadlines for regular meetings, this is Rule 5D, any of the above items of business to be presented to the City Council at its regular meetings for action shall be submitted to the Clerk of the Council no later than 10 a.m., five days exclusive of Saturday and Sunday, 
preceding the regular council meeting. The council president may approve any additional items for inclusion in the agenda after said deadline. Council president shall determine the placement of business on the agenda. The council agenda, including the mayor's communication to the council, if any complete with documentation, shall be delivered to the city councilor no later than three days exclusive of Saturday and Sunday prior to the regular meeting of the council, which would mean Fridays. So we're getting a Thursday because that's the last day that uh, currently the city is open. So I ask all of you to remember this. Uh, I know it's easy now that we're sending uh, agendas and items digitally, but uh, if they come out before after Thursday, um, it's up to the president to include it in the agenda because then it's probably appropriate given open meeting laws that we do a revised agenda. Um, we're trying to be more careful about how we submit things so and how we present them to the public. It also gets on the website, etc. So try to keep in mind that Thursday is a deadline. If you have items that you need the council to deal with at the next meeting, they need to be there by the Thursday before. Thank you. Okay, thank you. And that concludes rules. Thank you. Okay, now I can start. So I, at my old business, um, I was talking to Council Riss earlier that um, two things for the citizens petition of the boardwalk. We are still actually a couple of people short of a full committee, but also um, the most importantly is I do want to reach out, reach out to uh, Mayor Tosnick to sit down with him and, and get kind of a, a, a better um, understanding of what his intentions are and feelings are about where he would like that request to go. Um, and I, I will do this as a promise. I promise to have had that meeting with him before our next city council meeting, so I will give you an update for them. But I guess in the meantime, let me at least ask for uh, in the form of a motion, a 60-day extension on that uh, request. So moved. Um, as a second. second. I thank you. Motion second. Um, all those in favor? Aye. Uh, opposed, abstain. Motion passes. So we've covered, I believe, everything on new business. So unless anyone has anything else, comments, I would entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. second. Okay, motion second. Adjourn. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed, abstain. Motion passes. See you on March, April 6th.